All right, guys, a little bit different kind of video today. Uh, not different kind. I've done this kind before, but Mr. Dakota says, how is a F-150 with a 3.7 liter V6? And here's your answer. It is phenomenal. Arguably, one of the most reliable trucks that Ford has produced since 2011. Maybe even before that. Here's the reason why I say that. 3.7 liter is a great engine. Not only did they put the 3.7 liter in an F-150, they put it in the squad cars, both the Explorer, the Lincolns, the Taurus. I mean, you could get it in a different packaged option depending on the type of vehicle and the purpose of the vehicle. Now, that is an excellent vehicle. And depending on what platform you get, you can get an external water pump and an internal water pump. It just all depends on the platform you get. If it's an SUV type uh, where the engine is out front or the engine's facing the traditional way, then the water pump is external and can be easily changed. I uh, prefer that style than the transverse mounted that you find in the SUVs and the sedans. The trucks, the transits that have the 3.7 liter, super easy to change, super reliable. I've seen them go 150 to 200,000 miles before even having to do anything with the timing chain guides and stuff like that. And some people are proactive and they get it ahead of time and they just go ahead and knock it out at 120, 130,000 miles. And they run the vehicle another 120, 130,000 miles. The cost of that somewhere around $22 to $2,500 for a set of chains, guides, things like that. Depending on your area, it could go up or down. And also depending on uh, inflation and where, where we are in demand of parts and availability. Uh, that platform is an excellent choice. Um, make sure that on that F-150, you pull the plugs out of the bottom of the doors. All the rubber plugs need to come out. Keep your door drains clean. Um... Make sure you use a little bit of, I take a little copper anti-seize and I put it on the back side of my rims before I mount them to any of my wheel locations before they go on the lug nuts. I put a little on the insert of the rim and a little bit on the hub where it mates and that's it. No anti-seize on anything else other than there. It's just a real dry coat of anti-seize, not a wet coat, a dry coat to where you're forcefully having to smear it. And I find they never really seize up after that. Early models had that. They had the flaking of the rims and stuff like that. There were some nuances with the uh, the mode mode door for the HVAC system. You go to get in the vehicle and turn the key on and go pop, 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 pop. You start the vehicle and then the charging system would go up and all of a sudden you'd quit. Sometimes it would keep doing it. Some couple locations that a blend over in kind of a hard spot to get uh, center of the dash. Some people would have to like remove the radio area and stuff to get back in there, whatever. But there are ways to do it. There's tips and tricks. I've shown you some things on this channel, but overall, the 6R80 with a 3.7 liter and that platform, four-wheel drive, excellent choice. Very low maintenance. Uh, tows pretty good for what it is. Uh, the only issue that I've ever heard really anybody complain about is the fact that they say, man, this thing won't get out of its own way when getting on the highway. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's not a powerhouse. But it is a very good, very reliable, great for zipping around town and stuff like that. But getting on the highway... And matting it to pass somebody or merging it'll do it but it's just not a five liter or a three five ego boost or a two seven you know great choice great platform excellent truck later you could find some with a three five some of them the newer ones with a three three really really good option na engines and uh very low cost low maintenance just keep them maintained change the oil by every four or five thousand miles uh change the trans fluid every 40 to fifty thousand miles change the brake fluid every couple years uh service your transfer case every 50 60 thousand miles uh just general made gear oil and stuff like that 60 70 thousand miles on them just you know act like you care about it act like you want the truck to last forever and the truck will last forever great choice of truck very easy to maintain one thing that i will say is when you have to change the spark plugs on that the intake manifold will have to come off instead of it being the typical hour hour and a half job it ends up being two, two and a half hours. For somebody high speed like myself or one of these other guys that work on these things every day, we can still get it done in about an hour, hour and a half. But the, st the standard charge for something where you have to remove the intake manifold to get to the spark plugs is going to be about a two to two and a half hour job with what you're going to get charged for a tune-up. Uh, the tune-up on them, you can run them 60, 70,000 before you got to change the plugs. Excellent choice of truck. Excellent money spent. Not going to regret it at all. If you're looking for a powerhouse, you're going to need to step up to the 5 liter or the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Uh, just know the 12, 13, and 14, they did have some little issues here and there with 
the transmission lead frame there was an extension put out by the dealer on some of that you have to check your vid and see if your truck was part of it because not all trucks were part of it and then some of them also did have a vacuum booster issue uh, I forget exactly what years it was but some of the vacuum boosters were up front behind the driver's side headlight or I think one of the headlights the driver's side headlight and it would act up and all of a sudden the brake pedal would get hard and feel like you had to stand on the brake pedal and pull on the bottom of the steering wheel that was an issue easy to fix though and then some of them had on the back of the engine on the passenger side depending on what model what engine you had you had a vacuum pump that would leak down the back of the engine and make it look like the engine was leaking but it really wasn't it's just a 50 60 dollar kit that you could buy on ebay or amazon task auto parts or something like that for 60 70 bucks and you get a whole pump unit and stuff and put it on there in 20 30 minutes yourself laying across the top of the engine uh no big deal but very low cost very easy to maintain that's what i think about the 3.7 liter in the early model f-150 from that era so i say go ahead and do it you're not going to be uh disappointed great truck oh yeah coolant hoses plastic connections especially coming from 11 12 13 14 model that is a maintenance item you don't think it is until it's leaking i would treat it as a maintenance item every 60 70 thousand miles start looking into replacing plastic elbows um even the reservoir, the coolant reservoir on them, the nipple that goes down into the lower hose would deform. And you'd think, oh, I just got to put a new hose on it. And it still wouldn't actually seal up correctly. You'd have to actually put a reservoir on it with the hose assembly. Again, super cheap, easy to do at home, not a big deal. Still a great truck. I would buy one. Real quick insert, a vehicle with 260,000 miles. Make sure you're getting maintenance history on it. Still probably has a lot of life left, especially if it's been taken care of pretty good. Get the maintenance history on it um and check and see the last time the timing chain has been done by 260,000 miles maybe at least once at least once um i would think that it would have had to have been done as long as it's been done at least once and you got some kind of idea on how long before you got to do it again typical is about every 140 160 ish somewhere in there uh i did have a guy that came to raise the umbrella on my tree here he was in a 3.7 liter 2012-2013 F-150. It had 414,000 miles on it. He was weird about oil. He only likes diesel oil. He, from new, ran only 15W-40 in it, Rotella, and said that he never put a single chain in this thing, never had to. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. This is just a man proud of his truck. Never had a check engine light or anything like that other than, I think, the purge valve purge valves are an issue on those trucks sometimes it's cheap 70 80 dollar part you can change it out yourself look at my video i have videos on that here but again like i said good truck if you're getting a smoking deal on it i'd pull the trigger